What's up, everybody? It's time now for a podcast. I'm Keith. I'm Matt. And this is the first podcast that we were, uh, we're going to do together. Don't have a name yet, so we're going to ask people watching, listening, if you've got any suggestions for name, we'll go from there. So, yeah. Yeah, let's give this a go. <laughs> we don't really know what we're going to talk about. We had a few questions written down. Yeah. We, uh, we just randomly started talking about it the other week after we'd been to the, the Darlington Magic May Day. Yeah, and then we met, mentioned, yeah, it was really good. Mentioned about a podcast and said, oh, fancy doing one, so. Here we are, we're going to give it a go. <laughs> we don't know what we're going to talk about. So Maybe. I sprung it on him a bit. Yeah. I said, oh, we'll come have a chat about a podcast and then you come to the house and had everything set up, so. So we're just going to do it go. straight away, yeah. <laughs> so we need a name, first of all, so in the comments, leave, leave a name if you've got any ideas, any suggestions. We asked a few AIs, but they, uh, <laughs> they're all a bit too cheesy, so we need something else, right? <laughs> They had all the things of like, it was very high class, like yeah, the uh, the enchanted ear, the enchanted ear. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh man, I can I'll have a look and see if they're still there. We'll, we'll we'll name a few off. Why not? See if you like it. It was like the the conjurer's cauldron or something as well, and uh, all random words and names. The magician's mindset. The wizard's whisperer. Abracadabra audio. <laughs> or how about this? Can we can we say that or will we get? Yeah, the, the the first name that they suggested was the Magic Circle. We said no. I, I don't know if that's already used. Might be might be Probably. already used. Might be already used somewhere. We um, can always go for the Magic Podcast. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Have you heard that one? No, never heard of that. Never heard of that. Don't know who they are. <laughs> so what was the first question we were going to ask each other? So. With it being sort of a bit random and then we not really had anything done, I had a couple of notes wrote down this morning. So the first one was, what got you into magic or how did you get into magic? Um, how I got into magic was, well, from what I remember was I was on holiday and I saw a magician at a hotel. This is, this is as far as my memory goes back. And I remember this guy, I think he owned the hotel. This could just be made up. <laughs> Honestly, it could be a dream. Um, but he, he, he had a, few illusions and then and then what yeah he kind of well it sounds a bit strange but he, <laughs> he took me back into this backstage area <laughs> oh, yeah. and he showed me and this is uh this is kind of what happened this is my memory but uh you know, he didn't do anything i don't i don't think i hope not um but yeah he, he showed me these like big illusions he was doing on stage and he showed me some close-up magic and i thought oh that's pretty good and then um when i got home i kind of got really in, uh, involved in magic and then I think I have family in Canada and we went to Canada and there's a local magic shop and we went to a magic shop and I think I had $100 and I just bought everything I could with $100 <laughs> and I went back home uh, to my to my auntie and uncle's house and I started performing these little tricks and then I think I did a, a talent show at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't win, um, but everyone was blown <laughs> away and then from there I just kind of kind of did it and did it and did it. I fell out of love with it a bit though a few yeah. years ago until uh, one of my ex-girlfriends actually said, why do you have all these cards and stuff like that in it? In, a, in your cupboard and I thought oh, I used to be a magician and I thought oh I'm half decent at this I'll start <laughs> doing it again so that's kind of how I got into it I yeah. think from my memory what, what, what about you? Well mine was we were going to wedding fairs looking for vendors for our wedding and then bumped into Andy Larmouth oh, yeah. he showed us some magic and it was like different I can't remember what he did so the first one was like flash paper to a lolly mm -hmm. give that to the wife and then do some other tricks and then it was the Omni deck yeah. And then obviously he did the Omni deck. I was like, how's he done that? What's he done with that? And then my mind just went racing. So I hopped onto YouTube and searched it up, found out how it was done. And I was like, oh, that, that's really impressive. That That's that's quite interesting. That mm -hmm. I want to do that. So then started just going from there, like watching YouTube videos and different things like that. Started getting decks of cards. And then now we've got like hundreds. And look yeah. what got now. <laughs> and it was just that, that little thing of like seeing magic in person for the yeah. first time and then that so that was your first time ever seeing it as well yeah that was like three and a half years ago really mm -hmm. so not that long i can't remember when mine was but i was as i said mine was when i was just a kid and that's the thing that everyone that. says i got paul daniel's magic kit when i was a kid yeah i was like i, I didn't know I never got any of that. Was that kid, <laughs> even though you only lived around the corner when i was younger probably I was like but, the same you used to watch um mass magician another yeah i love that show. breaking magic secrets or whatever yeah. i used to watch that 
every week. I tell you what, actually, when I, one of the first magic kits I actually got was Stephen Mulhern. Right. I, uh, I got, I think he, did, he used to do a TV show called Tricky TV. Do you remember yeah. that? And I used to go home, I think it was every Monday or something, and I used to go home and I used to just sit and watch <laughs> that for an hour. And it was brilliant. And then I got his magic kit and he had a, a VHS and I used to put that on and I used to learn everything from there. I remember there was, I think there was one on it where you'd make two tubes and you'd have some tennis balls or apples and you could make them jump <laughs> from either tube and then I was just like, I love this. And then from there, I just kind of kind of got into more. And I, do, I don't know recently where I've got into, because um, I've gained a lot of knowledge probably just by watching a lot of lectures and stuff mm. and a lot of knowledge I didn't have when I was younger because I wasn't ever part of like magic societies when I was, you know, by the way, we're both part of Middlesbrough <laughs> uh, Circle of Magicians. Yeah. Can we say that? Because I'm still a probationary member, but... I'm still. Are you really? Yeah. How but I've met? been... Over a year, I think it was... Yeah, April, so technically so he's, a, he's, he's a full member. Fully pledged member. Fully tech. pledged member. <laughs> Just without the badge. He needs the badge. Um, but yeah, no, I was never part of Magic Societies or anything like that when I was younger. I think I did go to one... They used to have a prep group. And mm. I, I think I went once or twice. But um, I, don't, I don't know. I just... I wasn't really... I don't think I had the confidence when I was a kid, and uh, now now it's all an act. Like, I'm not. I'm still not confident. I'm, I don't go in shops. My my girlfriend orders takeaways. She answers the door. I don't. I don't do anything like that. No, absolutely not. Well, you don't need to. She does it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so now I just. I just. Uh, it's all an act when I go out. If you see me and you say, oh, "Do you want? Like, can, can you show me a trick?" And I say no, it's because I don't. Don't want to. Uh, but when when I'm working, that's a different story. I'm like, "Yeah, hi guys, how are you doing?" Like, yeah, it's all an act. I suppose that's the thing. It's like you have to be like that when you do magic, isn't it? Yeah, so. you gotta be. Don't. I'm not grumpy. I'm really. I'm not grumpy. Don't worry. I'm not a grumpy guy. I'm, I'm quite friendly. I will show you a magic trick if you ask me. I think that's that's the hardest thing for me. Is like with being so new to it. I know tricks and knowledge and techniques and that sort of stuff, but mm -hmm. actually perform for people. Even all the stuff that I had routined to apply for the Middlesbrough Magic Circle. Mm -hmm. Went through that multiple times with Eric and Stephen. Oh, yeah. And then when it came to do it, it was like hands are shaking like this, trying to do the trick. Yeah. I think what the thing is mental. there as well is it's completely different from performing out. Like I, I've been working, I think I started like professionally doing magic. Um, my first gig was at a nightclub and back in 2018 or something like 2018, 2019, something like that. Mm. Um, and it's so different performing to like drunk people or people in restaurants <laughs> to then going to perform in front of a room full of magicians. Yeah. You, you want to you wanna feel like, you want to get the reactions that you do from the people in the clubs and the pubs, but you're not going to because they're all magicians. <laughs> and you want to fool them, but you can't fool them. So you just kind of, I think they know what they're looking for though. They know like, you just want to see that you're confident. Yeah. And, you know, I suppose it's like having that interest in magic rather than just someone who yeah. wants to come in and then take whatever and... Yeah. Exposure and stuff, but yeah, I don't know if anyone would do that in Middlesbrough, though, would they? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I I'm, I'm just... kind of enjoying the uh, since since I've joined, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Like I've got, you know, obviously you now. I've got, mm. I've got other other friends that are all magicians, and it's it's great when you've got all them type of people because if you ever want to do a show or anything like that, you don't have to pay consultant fees. You just got your <laughs> friends, <laughs> so it's great. Well, you did a show recently, didn't you? We did, we did. Um, well, I'll be open and honest about this on this podcast, right? Um, so, yeah, Patrick, if you're watching this, you're a prick. And yeah, so how it, how it came about, I believe he was at, um, he was at a funeral of all places, um, drunk as as per, and he went to uh, he went to the owner of the club. He said, "How much how much to rent that stage?" And uh, she gave him a price, and then he said, "Here you go, here's your money." And then came to me and said, Matt, I've booked a, I've booked a stage. I was like, what, what do you mean? He's like, we're doing a show. I'm like, are we? Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> no that, choice in it. That you kind of happened. Um, then from that moment, I think we had a couple of months to, to sort of plan a show. So we got everyone involved that we, we, we knew that performed. So we did that and said, everyone, think of a 10 minute act or like five minute act. Mm -hmm. You're going to go on for like five minutes. You're going to do your piece. And uh, we're going to have a compare as well, which was was Gary. And we really we really thank you, Gary, <laughs> for, for what you've done for us. Um, he brought all the equipment. It was brilliant. It wouldn't have been a night without him. Because he loves his apps and tech. He does. He loves it. He absolutely <laughs> loves it. There's nothing that he doesn't have, let's be honest. Um, and yeah, so we all got up. We did a 10-minute piece, piece each. 
um, and the night went better than I expected to be fair because the the little rehearsal that we actually had mm. you know it, it couldn't have went better to be fair the way it, way it was going to so hopefully another one of them someday yeah yeah don't know where <laughs> maybe somewhere even bigger I mean it was just a, it was just a social club that we did it in but it was a it was a great practice run if you can't call it a practice run <laughs> you know it was a great sort of first time we learned a lot from it mm. uh, so we learned about like because was, I'm a closer performer I learned a lot about stage management and audience management and stuff like that so that, mm. was, that was really good I suppose a big difference just like dealing with a, a few people there to like an entire Absolutely. room of people yeah and as I say I'm a close-up performer so I was taking my close-up tricks and sort of making them on a larger scale but it, it's it's a lot to think about I mean yeah you can use bigger props but You've got to make sure everyone can see, everyone understands what's going on. I don't know how to explain it. I, I'm not new at this, you know, I couldn't. I'm no Darren Brown. I suppose that's the thing, like, once you've done one, you know what went wrong or what could be improved. Yeah. So yeah, you just sort of work on that for the next time. Yeah. Um, I'll have to write this all down and we can, we can have, like, a whole show dedicated to how to do a show. But, I mean, when I've got a little bit more experience, but, uh, mm. but yeah. Any more questions on this? Yeah, I wrote down a, a couple of things. So, what's your favourite part about performing? The girls. No, <laughs> joking. Paige, don't don't kill me, please. Um, no. Uh, how is my favourite? Do you know? I tell you that question can go into something. A lot of people ask me, um, "What's your favourite trick?" Mm. Like, and my favourite trick is whatever gets the best reaction. Yeah. Like I know people have the the old thing. So it's 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 the reactions. I think, like. It's not the you get you get all right money when you're doing gigs. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's literally about like having fun. I think it's having fun, getting the best reactions, mm -hmm. um, and th that's kind of the best part for me. And as I say, it goes back to saying, what do what do people like? What do people react the best at? Oh, sorry, what um, what's your favorite trick? And as I say, it's, it's the one that gets the best reaction. So it could be, I think I have a, like a, I have a paddle, mm -hmm. a couple of quid. And that gets better reactions than a trick deck that I spent £100 on or something like that. It gets way better reactions. So I'm just like, well, I love this. Yeah. It's a worker um, and I'm going to use it all the time. That's well, that's kind of what People what say I, the same about sponge balls. It's like well, yeah, really I'm simple sponge balls. like super easy. But then people get reactions like, I've got one ball in my hand and I've got two. Yeah. It's, um, just, it's, a, it's a serious worker. It's like, it's like I'm, not, I'm not a buy, but I'm not a fan <laughs> of all these... Like really expensive gimmicks. Like I love them, and I'd love to buy them all, and I'd love to have them all. <laughs> but then at the end of the day, you can go out with a deck of cards, an Omni deck as your closer, mm. um, couple of little bits in between, coins, cards, whatever. And that day you work is really you could you could spend twenty quid and go be a professional magician. Let's be honest, you don't need the whole mm. fanciness of everything. So that's probably my favourite part. What's yours? Like I mean, I, I know you don't do gigs, but. Yeah, uh, like reactions, I think. So yeah. when you're performing a trick for someone and then like the face and the reaction of like, how have you done this? Like, what's going on here? Like, that's that's what I enjoy about it. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's trying to like, to build up that, to perform more and yeah. get over that bit. Do you know, just, just saying about that, like, if you... um. If you practice at home, it's 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 nothing until you get out there because you've got to know how to like judge your audience and like what jokes you can throw in there. It's mm. it's 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 okay if you watch the DVD and you copy the pattern word for word, um, and you go out and you perform it. As soon as you get your own sort of style and it's one, once it's been out there, that's when you start becoming the better performer. I think. Yeah, that's really good about that. It was like one of my audition tricks was uh, a trick involving the Broadway reversal. So I learned that from reading some books mm -hmm. and I got it and I was like, oh, how can I do this? And I was saying, oh, well, you've got a deck of cards here. What's, what's the four cards that are coming in a deck of cards? People say like hearts, diamonds, club spades. So there's that, but there's also magicians, four versions. So they say there's the any card, which is any card. Mm -hmm. Get them to choose one. That's a chosen card. And then you do the Broadway reversal and they say like there's the ambitious card, which is normally the top one. That's when you do the reverse. Not so ambitious card, and that's your four cards. So then you say, so what are they again? So it's any card, you, so you flip the deck over, show all the cards are uh, face up. So yeah, and cut the deck like this, as the ambitious card goes to the top, not so ambitious card, the second from top. Now what's left is your chosen card. Sometimes it gets a bit cocky, 
throws itself over on the deck, mm. turn the deck again, and then that card's face down, mm. and then they pull it out, and that's their chosen card. And then it's like what you said, that's what I've built up from just reading of how to perform this move, mm -hmm. and then I needed something to go with it. Yeah, you need like I said, it, if you're watching DVDs and stuff, a lot of people get the pattern from the DVDs. Yeah, like some people, I don't, I, I'm not a huge fan of this, but when people do uh, routines exactly word for word, um, like it, it, it's good to start like that, but once you're in performance, you can do it word for word, and people will throw things at you, like half of my jokes, <laughs> That I say uh, what people have gave me. Like what I was doing a, I won't say the jokes. It is pretty bad. But when I'm doing um, a celebrity smart ass that I do, mm -hmm. it's some guy t told me a joke with one of the one of the celebrities, and I use that every single time now. Like so, I don't make my own jokes. I get other people to make my jokes for me. But it's like that. That's kind of what you what you learn when when performing. You learn how to add your own things, how to do jokes, and sort of then say, oh, well, this wasn't working, but this was in the DVD, so maybe I'll change that up a bit to make my own words, and then and then it, it just, you see that you get better reactions, maybe. Mm. Um, so it's just, it, that's kind of how I think is the best way to do it. But I suppose it's the same as well, like you can get things from other sources, but it, if it depends on, fits your style and the nature. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I don't know, a very serious mentalist, and you're doing something to, to read someone's mind, mm -hmm. and then you get a joke thinking, oh, I'm going to read your mind. That's a bit dirty, that, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of, like, it would have to fit your character. Yes. That you sort of, you do when you're performing the magic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I, love I that. don't know. So, where do you see yourself in the future? God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to have to come back to that, because I, honestly, I don't know. For the past few years, I've been... Well, I have, a, I have a real job as well, so it's not my full-time job. Mm -hmm. Would I ever make it my full-time job? Maybe, yeah. But I like that break that I get from it um, by it's, going it, to work. It's like a lot of full-time magicians that I speak to, they're like, fucking hate magic. Yeah. Because that's the thing. Not naming anyone. But no, I a lot of them will, will admit it anyway. But. Yeah, they will. <laughs> when, you, when you do make it a job, it, it becomes a job. Um, and it, it's like you need to learn more, you need to work harder. I mean, yeah, you've got all the sort of advertising side, you've got to put yourself out there and you've got to, you've got to do wedding fairs if you want to do getting at weddings and stuff like that. You've got to, mm. you've got to do all that. It, whereas, like, as I say, I, I, I don't do it full time, so that's kind of what I'm liking at the minute. I, I don't know what I want to do in five <laughs> years time or whatever, <laughs> 10 years time. I mean... Just to see you doing the things that you do, so like... Working in the clubs and eventually I will get. Stuff. I mean, I'm 27 now, and every time, every year when I'm in the club, um, performing magic. Maybe 50 cent. <laughs> yeah, he's on soon. Actually, he's, <laughs> on in, he's on in Newcastle soon. Actually. <laughs> Can I go see him? <laughs> um, no, but every every year when I get in, the audience is getting younger and younger. Mm. But they're not not like like <laughs> they're all 18, but I'm get, I'm getting older, you know. So I'm thinking, oh, back when I used to go, it was great. Like I used to have all my regulars, and then the next year I kind of had new regulars. And mm. I mean, so it's good to get a cycle of people because you can do the same tricks every single year because it's yeah. new people every time. <laughs> but um, no, I, I, I don't want to work in a because when I'm like, let's be honest, when I'm 45, let's say, <laughs> working in a club or 50, working in a nightclub where everyone's that young. Yeah. I'm just off the face and I'm still doing the same tricks. <laughs> I'm just like, what am I doing here? I don't want to be going to bed at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning for after working in a club. I don't want to do that. I mean, it's hard enough now. Mm. Um, I'd like to get more into the weddings. I mean, I do a few weddings at the minute, but mm. because, let's be honest, weddings is where the money is. Everyone will tell you that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's just, I don't know. I like the weddings, don't get me wrong. But if you're doing weddings, you're doing it for the money, you're not doing it mm. because you enjoy performing. I perform and I love performing in restaurants. I think that's such a nice place for just close up magic. People don't realise what it'll bring to a business, mm. just having a bit of entertainment like that. It's a bit different, you know, rather than your casual singers and stuff like that. Oh, I tell you what I'll actually love to do in five years. I want to open a magic bar. <laughs> so you know who you are. Um, I want to open a magic bar. I want to open like a speakeasy um, of my own. So I like have a have a storefront mm -hmm. where it's um, Gary gave gave me the idea of opening a magic shop, 
but this magic shop's probably not going to sell everything. Well, you're going to have like a, a secret hidden door, aren't you? Yeah, a secret <laughs> hidden door, um, secret passwords, mm. go in, huge theatre at the back, and I'd love to do a show, but not just me and me and my friends and everything like that. We, I'd love to put on a show like every night if I could. Mm. But uh, yeah, that's, that's probably something that I'd love to do in a couple of years' time, but whether I'd... We'll see what happens. I don't want to say no, but you know, if there's a bunch of us together, I mean, I don't mm. see why we couldn't do it. Maybe one day. I was saying when I was in Bath the other week, it was doing some filming in Slight Bar. Slight uh, Bar. Yeah. So basically, it's like a, in a basement. So you're downstairs and it's a bar, and then at the other side is like a corner of a bar, mm -hmm. and then Paul Brooks who owns it, mm -hmm. really nice fella, and every night he goes down, performs magic, and gets other magicians in to do this. So people coming in for drinks going to this magic bar and then they come down a lot of them are seeing magic for the first time do you think so magic just, bars are a bit more popular than, than um, magic shops I know it's a bit of a weird comparison but brick and mortar magic shops now are slowly decreasing but magic bars seem to be well popping up all over right yeah because uh, we've got I think the, now, don't we? the the good thing is like you don't have to pay to go in yeah so you just go in, you spend your money on drinks. So obviously, if you if you're doing well with the magic stuff, they're going to stay there longer and want to see more. So buy more drinks. Yeah. But I th I think it's really good. Like if there's one near here, well obviously Tom Bolton's got one. Yeah, we've got. But I don't know whether that's we've got local one. Like in Durham's the closest one. I don't know whether you can walk in or whether you have to book tickets so I, for the I've, events. I've been and you, it's it's you have to book tickets. It's limited to ten people. Um, it's a very very small venue, but it's very intimate and very very good. Uh, very close-up magic he doesn't do anything spectacular it's just 10 people in a like say a semicircle. Mm. he does you're a close-up show which is uh as a magician you don't expect to get fooled when you go <laughs> see a magician now but one trick fooled me and i was just like that was that was worth coming that was honestly worth coming um and he has like a little hatch in the in the wall so he, when you come in he serves you a drink mm -hmm. and then uh, halfway through the show you take a break and then you go downstairs because you've got like a a bookcase, but behind that bookcase is a door, and you right. go downstairs, and uh -huh. you sort of sit in a little semicircle, and you perform. He performs more magic to you, a bit more, a bit more of a story downstairs of how he came to acquire everything. And, yeah. and that upstairs is just close-up magic. Downstairs is like really quite intimate, and it's it's quite nice. I'd recommend going. Mm -hmm. I mean, for twenty quid, it's it's a nice little thing to do in Durham, just like for the for the night. I mean, you're only there maybe ninety minutes or mm -hmm. maybe two hours at the most. Yeah. But it's 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 a nice little thing, and it, I I do that. But I want it. I want mine to be on a bigger scale. I want and I want that whole speakeasy vibe where the theatre is at the back and stuff like that. So I do want to do the same concept, but mm -hmm. but on a little bit of a bigger scale. As I say, with everyone, I hopefully can do yeah. that. Yeah, so I know there's like um, Penguin Magic. So when I was looking at them on YouTube and stuff, they've got all. They do all the magic shop and the magic tutorials. But mm. they've got a massive theatre as well, so they have shows yeah. in there. I think. So having something like that would be great. They do like, all the lectures there, don't they, as mm -hmm. well? Yeah. I'd, I'd love I'd love that. And, you know, that would be a great place to host any sort, sort of, like, magic circle. Well, now the Middlesbrough one or whoever, you know, they could hire that and they could put lectures on there because mm -hmm. you could get people travel from all different societies um, to come together and do a big, huge lecture in that one building. You know, if it was a theatre. Yeah great idea wouldn't it yeah because i think a lot of them do anyway like i know when darlington had it there was some people from scotland come down yeah. and like people yeah. from yorkshire come up and stuff so yeah. so you, you know we, we've got we've got three around here do we three or four societies we've got the newcastle newcastle darlington middlesbrough, middlesbrough. and is that northern magic circle do they do they meet up is I'm that not sure is that quite i don't know where that well i know that i think there used to be a durham one because when i started looking to join a magic circle there mm. used to be that but i don't think that exists anymore all right so it was a toss up between Newcastle and Middlesbrough because both the same distance. Mm -hmm. And then I knew Tom from Middlesbrough. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know anyone up Newcastle. There was Tom Bolton and then obviously Graham Shaw, mm -hmm. but that was it. So as I went to Middlesbrough and then my friend Dean went up to Newcastle because it was easier for him because he's like concert wear. Ah, oh, right, okay. So. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. Like if you want to get like a really big lecture, um, you know, collectively, you could all just come to the one place and if it was a, magic bar theater or whatever mm. get on the stage do his lecture brilliant and then we already have a magic shop out front to sell his stuff afterwards you know yeah 
You know, I, might, I might start writing this down. You know, <laughs> I don't want anyone to steal this idea. Everyone else stealing it. Yeah, no, it's probably not. It's probably not the first time it's been done. But uh, <laughs> I love, I love that idea. Maybe that. So that's the answer to the question. That's what I want to do in five years or however long. Mm. That's what I want to see myself do in the future. What about yourself? What do you want to do? Like, because yeah. obviously you've only been in magic three years. Yeah, something like that. Three and a so, half years. So what? What do you want to get? Like, do next, or what do you want to gig? Do you want to? I don't know, like, I think doing, obviously the YouTube stuff's quite good because my obviously full-time job is like photography, videography stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's quite good that I want to try and build the channel up a bit more and do that. Yeah. But then there's other stuff, like I've been involved in a couple of projects filming magic. Yeah. So I think in the future, like, that's one possibility to go into. Because mm -hmm. then it gets me more involved with the magic and then I become part of it as well. Yeah. Like, and then obviously I do wedding photos, wedding videos, and then a lot of people saying like, oh, do you want to do like magician at the wedding? But I don't know. It's like I'll be there for doing one service rather than trying to do both. Yeah, be it would be a bit crazy like that. Like I was at one of the first weddings I did. Um, the videographer at that, um, a friend of Tom's actually, he he started whipping out the cards and doing all the cardistry stuff. He, I think he's more into cardistry than he is magic. But there's um, a guy called Adam. Yeah, um, Adam, I think, yeah. And he, he started doing that. And uh, the photographer was just like, when the uh, when the videographer is also a magician, <laughs> and I was thinking, hey, stop taking my phone. <laughs> you know? No, but it was like, you couldn't see, you couldn't do two jobs at once, especially like yeah. that type of job. But I mean, if, you, if you're going to be doing video, you're going to do photography, you're going to be a magician, I mean, you may as well start like a whole network of, of people, right? But the thing is, like, knowing a lot of the local magicians, it's like yeah. you don't want to take over their job or work. Yeah, I'll be honest, it is, com it is quite competitive. Um, it is with the photo and video stuff. Yeah. But then, like, a lot of us are friends and help each other out. So yeah, if we true. can't do a job, we'll pass on to someone else, that sort of thing. There's that, but then... Yeah, it's true. I don't know. And the plus of doing magic at weddings is you can turn up, do your magic, and then go. Whereas yeah. I have to do all that, and then I've got hours of editing after. Yeah. I mean, our, our job just stops there, right? <laughs> we just go, we entertain... And then, we, then, we, then we're done, right? Yeah. We're done. I mean, you see the bride and groom, you give them, like, and I, I give gifts and stuff like that, so I, I give them a gift, and then I'm like, great, thank you for having me. Uh, please leave a review. I think the only thing that I do is, like, follow up and say, oh, don't forget to leave me a review if you can. Yeah. And then, like, you know, maybe one out of five, I might get a review or something mm. like that. It's quite good. So what sort of gifts do you do? Because I know I've seen before someone does cube in a bottle and gives them yeah. the signed cube. I'm not... Personally, I'm just not a fan of Rubik's Cube magic. I, I just can't do it, so I've never... <laughs> if I can't do something within the first five minutes, I look at it and I put it down. I'm not doing it. Um, but no, I do... Um, I, I wish I brought it with me, but no. I, I think most people do this. It's just a classic Omni deck, mm -hmm. but engraved. I did um, think about that thing, and that would be a good idea for like a bride and groom. Yeah, it's like you, you can do that. I mean, you can see how much I've used this. It's absolutely <laughs> smashed to bits. As soon as the first person ever dropped it on the floor, I've kept, I've, I've, had, I've kept it the same way because... The first like, oh, no. It's like, ah. The reaction that I got when it actually got first dropped on the floor was just a massive scream and a drop. <laughs> so it, it's just absolutely battered now. So I use this. Um, I should get a new one. I do have a new one, but I just don't use it because this is... <laughs> Still working. It's not smashed. It's not broke. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it feels like, but with the with the cut edges, it kind of looks more rounded, like a deck of cards. So I kind of and it's sentimental. So I always yeah. use it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I get engraved ones. I use this all day, and then I use the Omni deck. So they, the hopefully the bride and the group haven't seen me already perform this, <laughs> and I I I go to them and and I do this to do the final trick. And. Uh, when they open, I don't ever get them to drop theirs, but when they open their hands, they kind of look at it and go, oh my God, it's gone. But then as soon as they read it and it says, so-and-so, so-and-so, congratulations, and the, you know, the date mm -hmm. and stuff like that, I don't ever put my name on them. I think I, I've seen magicians <laughs> say from so-and-so, yeah. uh, so-and-so, but I don't, I don't bother doing that. I just think it's a nice little magical object that they can kind of like keep on the shelf yeah, and then like just have it there forever. And then when someone goes up, oh, what's that little thing there? Uh, like they'll just probably think it's a, an ornament and someone yeah. might just come and go, oh, what's that? Congratulations. Then they can go, oh, well, it was a deck of cards at one point and then they all fuse <laughs> together. And then that person will go, oh, my God. Yeah. And then they'll want to hopefully book me again or the 
you know, they could, the they could person recommend yeah, 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 recommending yeah. stuff like that. So just a nice little touch like that. You can also give other gifts out. I think um, David Penn brought out, I don't know if it's his trick, but he performed it to me and my girlfriend in Blackpool. And it was a four of hearts, two of hearts, or one of the hearts. Mm -hmm. And he um, he got us to sign the pips. Yeah. And then I think he, he put it in our hands or something and they... Did he put it in our hands or did he slide the... I think he slid the heart down and then uh -huh. it's like two hearts become one and all that. And I think yeah. I think you can get that for... That's not, it's not much. I think it's like 15, 20 pounds, something like that. I might mm. have to check that. It might be more, it might be less. But it's like you get so many of them and you can... You could you, you get your money's worth, basically, yeah. if, you, if you're performing that every I day. I because people learn about before saying, oh, like, it's a lot of money to spend as a gift. But then if you think about it in general, how much money you're being paid... Like it it, it's not much, and then it's like a lasting reminder for them to think. Yeah, even if like at, wedding magicians range from a couple of hundred pounds to a couple of thousand pounds sometimes. You know, depending on depending on who it is or it how popular on, they like, are. How many hours, and if they're gonna like a yeah. lot of them MC and compare. And yeah, they do now, like Toastmasters and stuff yeah. like that. They all do that. So it it's very inexpensive gift. I I think anyway. I mean, with the deposit I take. Mm -hmm. I can easily buy one of them, you know. Yeah. That, that's kind of why I take the deposit. I just go right. I'll get, I'll get the, I'll get the gift now. Uh -huh. And I think Prop Dog do them for. I think they charge twenty five pounds. Twenty pounds for a normal one, anyway. Yeah. So for an extra five, I get it engraved. Mm. Why not? Why not get it engraved? Um, you know, Prop Dog do it. Um, you also, if you go on Second Hand Magic, I think um, you know there'll be a few people to help you out. There's not all. You don't always mm -hmm. have to go to a magic shop, but it's good to support them. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's where I, that's where I used to get mine from. I mean that's where I still get mine from. <laughs> <laughs> so what about when you got into magic? What's some of the first tricks or techniques and things that you learned? Um, I honestly I can't remember. Um, I think one of my so, first. So how long was it like since you were a kid that you got into magic then? <sighs> I'm just trying to think. Over cause... 15 years ago. Oh, honestly, over 15 years ago. So, probably so YouTube like... wasn't like a major thing then, was no, it? No, and I've never been really like a book reader or anything like that. Probably the, the first trick I did was the Apple thing, you know, <laughs> Stephen Mulhern's DVD. But uh, no, the the first ever, I didn't really learn techniques when I was a kid. I wasn't, as I say, if I couldn't do something within the first five minutes, I just wouldn't <laughs> do it. So... I, th I don't know what honestly possessed me to probably learn how to do a riffle shuffle and learn how to spring cards. Mm. I think I just used to play with cards and that's kind of what I did. But I've never, I've never been one for complex moves. I, I really just like self-working tricks that I can put my own part to. Mm -hmm. And like now I still, I can't, I can't really cull very well. I can't, um, like I can do a double lift, but it's not a convincing one to me, especially. Mm. So I don't, I don't do any sort of thing fancy like that. My my tricks involve, uh, I do, I can do a paddle move really well. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty easy. Uh, but no, my, my first trick that I always go to, like the open, is like self worker. Mm. Um, the next one's a paddle and paddle trick that I use like a gambling game with. Yeah. Um, and then just other workers like invisible deck, and uh, apps on your phone are great. <laughs> and then the omni deck is just. But we're not revealing any methods, but we know it's a switch, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so th they don't require any hard moves. So I don't re ever remember ever learning a first move. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll tell you the first trick I ever loved. It was a 10 year trick. You know, Crystal Cleaver, is it called? Yeah. And I remember I did that in the school talent show. <laughs> Still lost. And uh, <laughs> I'm still bored. bitter about it. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I'll never forget. And I know who won. I know the guy who won. He was a close friend of mine. And uh, yeah, he shouldn't have won. Everyone <laughs> felt sorry for him. So. Uh, but no, I, I took a teacher's ring. I mean, out of like 100 <laughs> kids that were in the audience, I did this tiny little <laughs> like sword through ring. Yeah. And everyone loved it, even though I thought, this is tiny. This is absolutely, <laughs> I mean, next time I'm going to cut a lady in half. I don't know I'll put them back together. Maybe it wouldn't be one of my old teachers or something. But um, no, I did that. And that was one of the first tricks. And then every every day after people, I was bringing it into school all the time. People were like, show me that ring trick again. Show me the ring <laughs> trick again. So I was doing it close up and people <laughs> loved it. And I think I got that from Canada. That was one of the first things I ever I ever bought. Mm -hmm. But um, a good thing that I was told once um, was uh, our friend Patrick. He wanted, when he wanted to get into magic, he was told 
um, well, he, he originally asked, how do I do that? How do I do that? How do mm -hmm. I do that? And they said to him, um, learn how to do a riffle shuffle. Yeah. When you can learn how to do a riffle shuffle, then come back to me, then I'll teach you more. So when he learned how to do a riffle shuffle, they said, okay, you ready? Yeah. You know, because I, I, that's, that's what I say to people now. If people say to me, oh, how do I... Uh, how do I get into magic and what should I learn first and stuff like that? I said, take a deck of cards, because every magician uses deck of cards, and learn how to do a riffle shuffle. Because mm. if you can do that, well, yeah. you're already confident with cards, aren't you? Mm. So from that, you can do your double lifts and you can do, you know, whatever you need to do. I think that's some great advice on where to get started and what, what should be your first mm. um, slight or... Uh, routine or anything like that as long as you can learn a, a riffle shuffle I think it's because everyone loves it don't they yeah as soon as people they, you, so, oh, that's a fancy shuffle that. yeah the, the, <laughs> whenever I do that they always, always people go wait what did you just do there I'm like <laughs> I just shuffle the cards but it's normal for us isn't it yeah but, yeah it's like the thing of like give someone a deck of cards how to do it yeah it's it's the like, classic that, go to general... it's the classic go to shuffle isn't it <laughs> just an overhand sort of shuffle as soon as you do this in front of someone yeah <laughs> They go, wait, do that again, do that again. And that's more impressive than half the tricks you do, yeah. honestly. And then when you can learn how to spring cards as well, I mean, that gets like, that's like, whoa, what the yeah. hell did you just do there? <laughs> but really, it's just hours of just doing this yeah. all there. Well, normally it's starting off like doing that, cards flying all over, and you have to pick them all up. Yeah. And then, uh... I, I originally, I, I never <laughs> knew how to, like, because I didn't read books or anything like that. I just kind of taught myself with a deck of cards. And obviously you see on TV and you see all these um, videos on online and stuff of people mm. springing cards, like, <laughs> over here and stuff. And I, I just started by doing this. <laughs> I went backwards. I don't know why, but I used to, all the time, just, I can't even do it now because <laughs> it's been that long, but I used to just do that. And I thought, how the... How do they? How do they get it so like clean? And someone told me this way. Yeah. And I went, ah, oh, right. So I did it, and I thought, oh yeah, that's that's probably more easier. And then it's just if you start here, and then you can gradually get bigger. Yeah. And so that that's like some of them slights. Just doing that, it's not even a slight, is it? It's just a bit. It's of, just a just a bit of thing to show off. Yeah. Do that, and then. From there, you're already you're already half decent with cards, aren't you? Mm. So from there, you can you can learn a double lift, and it won't be too hard. Yeah. So I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty good advice. I, I mean, take it as you will. I don't. Really <laughs> that's what I heard. And I just think it's great advice. When I got in, it was like looking on YouTube for like easy card tricks or yeah. like beginner card tricks and stuff. And there was um, was it four bank robbers? Oh yeah, yeah. That's so, like one of the ones you, yeah. on my were always the four jacks. I always yeah. use the four jacks. So I think that was one of the first videos I did on here as well. Um, and different stuff like uh, scarf through neck. So I remember yeah. saying that. I was like, I want to learn that. So I did that and that was another video. Yeah. Um, Gemini twins. I don't know that one. Do I know that one? Uh, I don't know. Like, the thing is what you learn about me is I don't <laughs> know a lot of things by name. Um, like I don't know how what moves are called and stuff like that. So, if I ever ask, you know, I've been doing magic a long time. I, you'd think I'd know this sort of stuff. I can watch a trick and go, ah, oh, it's done like this. And then someone might, oh, it's this method. I'm like, is that yeah, what I do just like this? Is that what I just said? And they're like, yeah, it's what you called it. Well, it's what you said it was, but it's called this. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know things by names, you know. But what, what, what is it? What is that trick then? So it's like the the matching twins, and you find them and all that stuff. All oh, right, okay. See, I don't know things about him, but I, I, I get what he says. Oh, it's the matching thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get then, that. like, what about? So, do you watch stuff on YouTube? Yeah. Who do you sort of watch on there? Um, when I when I got into magic again, obviously Chris Ramsey is probably the biggest name that we mm. we know out there. Um, I mean, I'll, with it, I'll just have a check. Obviously, Chris Ramsey when he was doing all of his his magic stuff, um, obviously more puzzles and stuff now, but. But uh, yeah, I just constantly watched him. I loved his street magic stuff. Chris, if you ever see this, which you won't, but if you ever see this, uh, please do another street magic video or something, because I just love that. Well, did you see the one you put up last night or yesterday? I have so Is that he, a magic related one or a puzzle one? It's a magic one. Is it really? So he put on, he was like, oh, I haven't released a magic compilation in a while, so he's one. So I think it's like 15 minutes of just magic compilation, so he's doing really? random tricks and stuff. I love it. I will definitely give that a watch. Uh, lately, it's been um, Jason Mayer, Ma is it? Jason Ma. Uh, Ma, sorry. 
Um, he's just. <laughs> you can throw anything at him, and he'll just. The patter on him is just say it's that, incredible. It's that confidence of like, yeah, yeah, I'll take this, 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 and this. It, it's like, just like it's like you've practiced that routine <laughs> for years to get that patter down, and it's any trick you throw at him, mm. he can do any trick. Lloyd Barnes, I mean, I've been watching him for the gimmick making and stuff like that, mm. and it's just incredible. Like for social media magic. What he what he builds is like next level. Mm. Uh, Chris, obviously, uh, who else have we got? Wes Barker. Um, and we were about before. Uh, Scam School. Yeah, that's where we all Good started. Brian I, think. I think I watched Scam School before anyone. <laughs> And you know, so, so that's so you can try and win some free drinks. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Even when I was too young to go in a bar and stuff like that. I tell you, it was a really nice channel. Um, Brendan Rodriguez, have you watched Brendan Rodriguez? I've seen he's, bits and bobs on Facebook and posts and stuff he's, on. I think he calls himself more of a juggler than a magician because the mm. things he does is just crazy. Yeah, well, he had a, an interview with a guy called Shade Flamewater who does oh. fire breathing, fire yeah. eating. Like, He's from Australia, I think. He came over. We did a, a fire photo shoot, and he was there because he was doing some stuff in the UK, like some workshops. It was really good to talk to him and stuff. And I think he was uh, he was on about developing some magic fire-related tricks, but I don't think anything's come of it yet. But right. Yeah, I, I probably just a very very little magicians that I watch on YouTube. To be fair, what I what I prefer to do is watch shows, Darren Brown shows, mm. um, and just generic magic shows that are already on YouTube. I mean, like I watched West Park and I took ideas from that. I like to watch shows rather than magicians teaching how to do tricks. Yeah. Because I like, I just watch a show and I'm like, right, that works. How can I make that my own and stuff like that? That's kind of how I watch YouTube, right, to get ideas for magic. I don't ever really watch tutorials or anything yeah. like that. I go watch Light Bards to make a gimmick. Mm. But as soon as it comes to the gimmick <laughs> making, I'm like, right, turn it off. Because I'm never going to make it, even though yeah. I have all the stuff at home. I've got all the elastic thread, I've got all that, and I'm like, cool, I I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. If, it, if it's not about, if it's, if it's folding a card, I'll fold a card. If it's like, right, you have like to cut, cut, the, uh, yeah. cut the king's head out, and then you have to <laughs> sellotape it on here, and uh, you've got to get a bit of elastic thread to make it go brown. Like, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that, man. It was like one of the first sort of, Slights that I learned was a Chris Ramsey one. Now the one where he gets it and then like he shows it's in the middle of the deck and you pull it down and then it's on the top. Yeah, like I tried. I, I, I tried doing that and I was like, I've got it now. At first I couldn't get the the cards to stick out, so it mm. looks like the cards out. You've got more patience got than it, me. And then, uh, You've got more patience than me. I I I've seen that one, <laughs> and it was uh, the guy that does my tattoos. Actually, he um he said, oh, I watch Chris Ramsey. You know, I've learned how to do this, and he he did the whole the yeah. whole thing. And I went, do you know how to do it? I went, yeah, yeah. He said, oh, go on then. I said, no, no, I know how to do it. I can't do it. Yeah. Could you do it now? I don't know. So take the Queen of Clubs. I'll put that in there. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just can't do that. Like, I And just... then like the expose you there, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I did it for Andy Lamos. We were at the wedding fair and he was like, it's a joke of things like shows a trick, so I did that, and I did that in front of him. He's like, "How do you do that?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You never seen it." It's like, yeah, it's it's like I, we don't. Know, I don't want to say he's the one that doesn't like magic, <laughs> like, but uh, no, he's 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 very entertaining, isn't he? He's mm. Very entertaining. No, um, it's great when you fool the magician, isn't it? Like Patrick the other day, I actually fooled him with a, <laughs> with a trick because he wasn't at the lecture that we were at the other day. Yeah. I fooled him with a. With a trick, and it's great when you fool a magician, especially a friend as well. It's like, mm -hmm. and then it, it, the, the good thing is, like, you can tell them how it works. We're all magicians, you know. <laughs> you can just tell them how it works, and I think we get more appreciation out of knowing how a trick works than being fooled. Like the actual mechanics behind it. And yeah, stuff like that. I think that's why you become a magician. You don't, you don't ever become a magician or anything like that to be, to be a dick and <laughs> sort of like sure that you're better than everyone because you can do this and you can't. Like, I do it just to entertain. Like, if someone guesses how to do a trick, I'm not that type of guy who goes, oh, no, no, it's not like that. I'm like, <laughs> I just kind of wink. I'm like, good, yeah. good man. <laughs> like, that's how, that's how I do it. Or if someone says, oh, I know how to do that, nine times out of ten, I don't want them to tell everyone. So I'll say, oh, don't worry, so do I. So you don't have to tell me. <laughs> it's like the classic go-to line. Yeah. <laughs> How long are we doing this? 45 minutes? 45 minutes. How long are we going for this? I don't know. Should we aim for about an hour or so? Should we aim for an hour or 15 See if anyone listen to it all. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
say to anyone <laughs> to listen to it all. It'll probably just be me and you listening to it back <laughs> over and like, over again. Put something in so it's like, if you're this far, comment this. Yeah, if what, you are this what far, what should we say to comment? Comment. Um, what do you? I don't know. Give me a word. Random word. Look for something. Table. There's a table over there. Comment table, comment table. if you've watched it this far. And I'm sorry if you have watched it. <laughs> well, do we have Did any more questions to go? Did one was any books or recommendations? I don't read. I, I just don't read. <laughs> I don't read. Do you know? No, I well, tell you there is a we run about, book. So I've just got Tarbell Volume One because mm -hmm. you run about that. And yeah, that's like a good, good one. So trying to build up that collection. I mean, but. if you if you just if you do read books. You, you don't have to watch any DVDs. There are, there are methods coming out now in DVDs and downloads that have been in books for years. Honestly, I, I don't read books now. I wish I did. Um, there is a few tricks that I've read in books purely because I've watched the trailer for the book and said, there's this trick in it, there's this trick in it, there's this trick in it. And there was one trick. It was in uh, Hector Chadwick's... Uh, what's it called? The Something Mysteries of Hector Chadwick. Let me quickly find it and I'll tell you the word because this is my book recommendation <laughs> of the week. Let's say we'll do this weekly, I don't know. Hector. Is it weekly book club? Yeah, we'll start a book club where we don't actually read the books, we just talk about, oh, this is a nice sleeve, isn't it? But have you seen that, uh, the guy on YouTube who does the fastest book reading in the world? Oh, when you... <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <doing it again. laughs> we'll have to do that and that'll be the book recommendation. That's the book recommendation. I've read this book and then we have to perform a trick from it, even though we've only just... <laughs> just perform any trick. What, what is in the book? Page 56. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, def the definitive mental mysteries of Hector Chadwick. There's a there's a chair test in there where you you throw out um, paper airplanes and then as far as that's been ages since I've read it and then they come on stage and it's just it's just a generic chair test I think but it's it's great because it's like throwing out airplanes and stuff like that that's the mm. only thing I've read I might read it again mm. oh no I can't because I give the book away I haven't <laughs> given it away I give it to Neil he's gone on a flight and he said have you got any good books to read and I just I got book him of like, the week <laughs> yeah book of the week so I gave him it and I said oh look at that and I think I gave him uh, Andy Diamond's new book mm. uh, what else did I give him again books I've never read but I like to collect <laughs> them like this um, yeah it's just I don't I don't know. I don't read books. I couldn't. I couldn't recommend a book. The Cat in the Hat, maybe or something. Green Eggs and Ham. That's a pretty good one. That was one of the first books I ever read. To be fair, but no magic books. I wish. Do you know what? I'll read one and I'll come back and tell you. What yeah. do we got for you? What do we got for you? The, the thing is, though, like when I first got into magic, and then you're looking on the YouTube and the Facebook and Google and stuff like that. They're like, what do you do? It's like. Expert at the card table. Where I wrote the card magic. Yeah. I remember I got it and I was like, what the fuck does this mean? Yeah. It's like, completely close. It's like, it's a good book once you've learned yeah. a bit of magic and if go back to it and then you the understand it. If you don't know the that you're talking about, yeah. then how are you, like when you're reading it, okay, do this, do a cull and do this type of force. and Obviously it's got like glossary and index and stuff, but then yeah. it's like, you'd have to learn all of that first and then go back to that. And mm -hmm. it was very complicated at first, but then like I said, just reading into it and like the brow ear reversal and stuff and learning things like that. What was that? The what? That, so the card goes the other way. So it's just like a reverse See, exactly. Card. I don't know. <laughs> just tell me you turn the card over. That's all I need to know. I don't know things by names. That's, that's the thing. I have all this stupid knowledge about, like I could watch mm. a trick. Like I watched Darren Brown's obviously latest show, Showman, and I've been re-watching it to kind of, I wouldn't say figure it out. Um, I kind of like develop my own methods in my head and be like, oh, it could work like this, but then this might be it. And then I have to think of something else. So I kind of, I kind of like doing that. Um, so that's why I don't learn from books. I learn by watching, <laughs> watching a lot of, uh, a lot of shows. Mm. But again, I don't know things by name. So if he did a move, I'd be like, oh, that, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's when he does this turnover, top change, whatever, I don't bloody mm. know. Um, but then someone will say, oh, it's this move. And I'm like, is it? All right. <laughs> just turn a card over. Just turn a card over. That's all you have to say. Just turn a card over, whatever way you want. I didn't know there was a million and one names for do like I know I know this is called a back palm. I know that's called a back palm. That's that's all I know. <laughs> but I don't know anything else. I mean, doesn't like palming have different names? Like every every type of palm you do, like this is a yeah, it's like, type of palms, huh? Dunno. Neither do I. <laughs> then you got like your gambler's cup and then like Yeah, you got all them. 
It's just palm of the card. I don't know what it means. <laughs> just do it whatever way it feels comfortable, I suppose. Yeah, but then at, we went to Newcastle the other day for the Christian Grace lecture. Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? That, that was, was incredible. Like, the the bit with the, uh, I can't remember what the trick's called, but the another you know, sandwich trick. Is it where he puts one card in and one card, and you, yeah, you ask like, how many? What's the amount? How many? Fifteen, and then yeah. it goes down to one. Yeah, that like, was the same with that. Even knowing a lot of tricks, a lot of techniques and yeah. theory and stuff, it's like. That fills us. I was like, "Yeah, how's he done that?" Do you know there's there's no slice. He like us. basically pushed them in, put it on the table, and I was didn't like, "Didn't touch him." And then it's like, "How does that work?" <laughs> but it, to fool a magician, I think you've got to be very basic because as a magician, we overthink things. Everything mm. we're like, "Right, how's he done that?" Well, he he must have done this, and he must have done this, and he must have been using this, and and really, it's like it's the most. And then he explained it, and we we're like. Oh shit! Oh, yeah, yeah, of course it would have been like that. But it's just like something you would have never guessed because it's too basic. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, this ain't the place to reveal <laughs> tricks. That's the, that's the sort. But, but it, it was incredible how he how he did it. Mm. Even though it was such a basic method, and I mean, ever since he showed a few of them, I'm <laughs> carrying around. I wouldn't say the gimmick as such, but I am now carrying around. Uh, what he's needed to do that exact trick. And probably most of his other tricks as well because his whole lecture was based around this one method. And from that you can literally do so many, so many mm. effects, then making cards vanish like in the spectator's hands. Um, and it, it doesn't require anything other than a deck of cards that you already have. And you can already- and Then he was saying like, he prepares the same thing yeah. In every deck, because you can use it as a normal deck. Yeah. And then when the time comes for it, you do that. When you when the time comes, you just put two and two together, and then it just it just works. It's like I'm doing a I've been writing a script for the a magic breakdown for the the cross cut force. Oh yeah. And obviously, one he did there. Yeah. It's like where you go through and do like the magician's choice of like you pick the clubs, yeah, or the spades, or the heart, or the diamonds, and then like yeah. you get it down to that. Yeah. It's just simple, isn't it? It is, it is true. So even though it's, we obviously know how to do, I think, are there things we can talk about on here that can be like, reveal, well not revealed as such, like can we talk about a crosscut force? Mm -hmm. I think everyone will probably who was watching this knows well, I said how I'm to do it. I'm doing a video for it anyway, so it's like obviously, you yeah. top of your bottom card, you peak that, and then when you do the crosscut force, that's the card that's forced. Yeah, I think we all know that, but then it's the, it's, it's, it's not the method behind that, because we all know how to do a crosscut force. It's the wording and everything he used that he kind of taught that was, mm -hmm. that it's not normally taught. It's, it's a lot of psychological sort of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know, I just want well, you to say stop on a card, but like every time he's getting it to that one card that he needs. Yeah. And really, it, it does feel like you have a free choice, but it's the wording that you use and the psychological force and that he's actually teaching you. It's the same with like, I've got one, it's on the back of my phone's a, a corner of a playing card yeah so it's a thing of like pick a number between one and ten generally people go for seven yeah and then you basically force the rest of it and then it ends up being the seven of hearts so then i yeah, use it all the time so it's like that. it's an imaginary card so we're going to take the corner of this card throw away the rest of the card you got this corner yeah so I'm do you make always it have a torn card. card as well a torn seven or do you just no because it's just do you rip a seven every time propolis no because oh. it's always in there so, oh, so you just case. imagine, yeah, because oh, you say right, we're going to pick a number, because you can either do like between one and ten, and they'll go for seven, or you say pick a number between one and ten that isn't three, because mm -hmm. obviously it's normally three or seven. Mm -hmm. and you go from there, it's like so. I got red and black. Which one do you want to select? You say black. So right, we'll throw that away. We're left with red. Hearts, mm -hmm. diamonds again. Which mm -hmm. one do you want to pick? Pick hearts. Seven of hearts. And say okay. So out of all the playing cards, you've got this one card here. This imaginary seven of hearts. So we're going to rip the corner, throw the way the rest card. We've got this corner here. I'm going to take know. it, throw it on my phone. And then you're like, look. Oh, no, it's not on there. Oh, hang on. You take the phone and they turn it over. And it's like, it's inside the case. How? That's like a great everyday and then that's carry, like, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know, that's a good question. What is your everyday carry? If well, you carry I've, anything. I've got that. Mm -hmm. And then obviously apps on the phone, so like Cognito and all that other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got um, Flight on my keys. Yeah, that's a great thing. I've got... Are you want to carry your own deck of cards? Yes and no. I've got cards yeah. in the car. Yeah. So if I need things, but like, don't have them in my pocket. Yeah. If you're not like, yeah. you're not like that committed to having props on you. Yeah, I've got um, I've got a gimmick called Ouch, which is 
basically a blister effect, mm -hmm. puts four different options on it. Oh, is that on your key? So, yeah, it? so like, do yeah. that and then it's good. Yeah, that's what's great. Like, everyday carries, as long as it's not on your... As long as it doesn't take any, up any pocket space that you don't mind taking up, mm -hmm. um, then it's great stuff. How about you? I carry everything on my phone I can do. Um, lately, I've been carrying around Showreel. Because mm -hmm. um, well, it, it is just a bit of paper. I've got a, at the end I've of got the a TCC wallet. With yeah, that's like great. I do yeah, card to wallet, wallet and that sort of stuff. But I don't really carry a wallet. But yeah. then I've got me Showreel in the wallet. Yeah. I've also got from the Dynamo Magic Kit. <laughs> so do you know the the scratch cards? All right. So it's got loads of numbers on. You get someone to pick a number on and say their age, and then you know what the number is. Oh yeah. So it's that, sim it's the great like, stuff in your in your wallet. As long as you don't carry around too many cards, you've got so much space for yeah, it's like for that. tiny props. And you know that showreel, Michael Murray just is one of the greatest <laughs> thinkers now. Just that showreel is just an incredible effect, and it's literally it packs. Do I have it on me? I'll literally show you how small it packs. Do I have that? Well, it's literally like, probably the size of a, a corner of a card. It literally it is, isn't it? To. Mine's upstairs. I, I do have mine on me somewhere. I thought I did. Do if, I? if no one knows the effect, it's um, you basically got this piece of paper that's ripped out of a magazine that you, you're sure. It's got all these movies on and actors down the side and different things on the back of like um, feature movies, blah, blah, blah. So you get them to to pick a movie that corresponds to an actor or an actress list down the side. So you go, for example, The Matrix, and you say, Matrix or Lawrence Fishburne, Keanu Reeves, they pick one, and then... I lost it. Basically, they, they pick a movie, pick an actor, you know, you read the mind, tell them what the actor is, and then you have a big reveal on it, and it's yeah. just... And the reveals are strong as well. Yeah. The reveals are very good. And it just, again, it packs small, it can fold up, you know? Uh, they're just the way the way like something like that small is great. I also I don't really carry on much in my wallet. I've got that receipt, the ED seat. Yeah. Um, I, I've been carrying that around lately. I've, I've been getting great like use out of it, but um, it's just something in there. If you if you don't mind putting a couple of receipts in your wallet like that you normally probably have, it's it's a nice little thing to carry around. It's just it's just there in case you want to do something different. You know what I mean? It's not like a card trick. It's not mm. anything. Like, it's a bit of mentalism. But I, I still think like to do uh, an extreme burn as well. That's something great to carry around. Literally, that is probably a really strong effect as well, and that can pack small. Mm. Um, apps on your phone, obviously, perfect, because that's no pocket space. You always have your phone on you. Mm. Um, the same, I've got, I put Lux on my key rings now, but I oh need yeah. to find a, a key ring size UV pen, uh -huh. so I don't have to carry a UV pen all the time. Oh, there'll definitely be one. So, We've been looking be around trying to get one like, of those like little, like mini little sharpies, sharpies. Yeah. but then have UV ink in so you can do it wherever. I'm trying to think you would just swap one out. Mm. There'll be one. There yeah. definitely will be on eBay, Amazon, something like that. You'll find it. <laughs> but every, my other everyday carries. In my wallet, I keep cards. Um, and I also keep cards dotted around everywhere. So when I tell someone to name a card, or to pick a card. Like, I don't have 52 cards on me, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I have, like, a good six or seven. Mm. I, I always, I've always had a two of hearts in my wallet. I don't know why. I think I used to do a two of hearts, pulled out the phone, mm. and I used to do that. So that's always in there. I've got a king of hearts. Um, if I've got my wallet on here, I'll, I'll show you, actually. That I've got a, a card. I saw that when you... That, but uh, magic box. It's literally it just keeps my bank card in. That's it. <laughs> and I just have that, and it's just it's a great like little conversation piece. As soon as you go in a shop, they're like, "Oh, it's contactless." Yeah, great. And it just <laughs> oh, that's an interesting card. And like oh, and I always have like obviously King of Hearts is in there. I always know the Two of Hearts is in there. Mm. I have Eight of Hearts on my Instagram. On my old Instagram, I have a King of Spades. If you scroll so far down, mm -hmm. um, and I just know, like, because I, I use them for tricks. I don't use that for a trick, but like, I've used the King of Spades on my Instagram for a trick, and I just so in my mind, I like I know that's still there. So if anyone does name that card, I can say, go to my Instagram. I can just yeah. forget what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and I can do such a stronger effect just by saying, oh, just uh, go on my Instagram and see what I'm not going to touch anything, and this is like yeah. pre-prepared. And if someone says it in the going Instagram, they're like, oh my God, but they don't know about the other seven <laughs> outs that they could have had or yeah. the, the trick that they could have had as well because mm. I was maybe doing an invisible deck or something. It's just like a stronger 
like a kicker ending, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it'd, it'd be good if I started carrying 52 cut, 52 cut, like have a tattoo here, have a tattoo here. You don't know about this tattoo here if you see this tattoo here, you know? It was like, um, I think Martin had one. I don't know if you were there then. It was basically a trick, and it was like, name any card you want. Mm. And then he's got like the three in everywhere, so it's like, on the back, you'll be off by one or something. So it's like right. an out for everything. So it's basically like 12 cards yeah. and then covers the whole 52. Yeah. What's great is, I mean, if you want to make it an everyday carry, carry an index. Like there's, there's um, I won't say the, because I've already said wallet index <laughs> and wallets and index and stuff like that. There is a great index out there that is a wallet. Um, if you're a magician, you probably know what it is. And that's like a good everyday carry. It doesn't really have like a lot of space for anything else, but you can keep your, mm. your, your money in it and you can keep a couple of cards in there. Mm. And then if you want to actually carry around like a lot of, a lot of like, a lot of magic on you, a lot of show, then you, you could literally have that on you the whole time. And mm. if you wanted, or you could just keep cards <laughs> tattooed on you or in your wallet and stuff like that. You could keep cards. You don't have to do it, you know. It's up to you. Yeah. I think that's been a good first hour, you know. I know. Should we uh, We've babbled get it wrapped up? We have. Yeah. But was, I think it was good for you the know, first one. We just absolutely chat <laughs> shit. We don't know what we're talking about. We're just making it up as we go along. We really don't know. I suppose in the future ones, we can have like an agenda wrote down and things to yeah. talk about or just go with it. Yeah. Just chat shit you know, we'll get, we'll get stories. We'll get, we'll get some good stories to tell. <laughs> and maybe sometimes we won't talk about magic because, I mean, we're both magicians. That's what we kind of talk about at the minute. But maybe sometimes we'll just tell a story about like, how pissed we were at the week or something like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll get pissed. Who knows? Maybe we'll have guests. You never know. I know. I have to expand the studio. I'll get more seats. <laughs> Maybe we can travel. Maybe we can we can uh, pop it up in a pub one time mm. and stream it. Why not? I know. That'd be good. How are we wrapping it up then? Uh, we'll end it by, obviously, we need a name. So yeah, Don't forget the name. I forgot about the name. And then remember, if you've come this far, comment table. <laughs> well, no, table. I forgot about the table as well. Yeah, comment That's table. That's not going to be not? the name of the podcast, table. But, uh... I think there's already something <laughs> the out there. The magic table. The magic table. Magic at the table. Hey, that's not a bad name. Yeah. Or uh, isn't there already a lecture called that or something? Yeah, at the table, isn't it? At, at the table. table, yeah. Well, yeah, let's not call it that. <laughs> Because that's already a thing. We could be on the table. We could be on the table. We could sit on the table. Why not? Whatever you guys want. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, Thanks for listening to our crap about us um, <laughs> that you probably don't care about and you probably won't ever watch. But thanks. And the end of the Bottom of the Barrel podcast, you also say, tell three friends. So Tell three friends. Tell three friends. Tell three friends about this. Yeah. And then tell those three friends to tell <laughs> other three friends. And then tell five friends. And then, yeah. And then hopefully we've got some people listening. Hopefully we've got someone. You know, one person's better than none, right? So, yeah. Anyway, Until next much. time. See ya. See ya.